Right, now we've got some kudu that are in front of us. Crossing the road, there goes a youngster. Now, while or as we stopped here, we've also heard lions calling. It sounds like those lions were south of our boundary, though. Um, so I'm not sure if the sticks pride that we were looking for or are looking for, if they cross back south. I'm going to double check the boundary. Jenny, you said you were hoping to see Kudu. Well, there we go. Ah, uh, Jenny, tick, first challenge. You you challenged me to find a kudu. There we go. Now, Brent's challenge about the birds, I, I kind of like it. There's a lovely, lovely view of this young male it's crossing the road. Now, I like Brent's challenge. I, To be honest, 100 birds in winter, oh, especially now, it's a bit... Uh, it's a bit difficult, it's a bit difficult, but it's a, it's a nice challenge nonetheless. So we can, um, how's about we keep a, to keep a record of all the birds we find in the next two weeks and see what number we can get up to. But it's got to be on camera apparently, that's, that's quite tricky. Um, ox peckers, do you get the ox peckers, the ox peckers around? See where they are. They, some flew over now, but so we could. There's one on the kudu. So red, red billed ox pecker. The first one here we go. One right here, crossing the road now. I said, is, is an ox pecker sitting on it? There we go. First bird, red billed ox pecker. All right. Now, I think are we gonna ask? I wonder if Alice has perhaps got a pen or paper, pen and paper in the final control, or one of the ladies perhaps. Ah, I see Alice is on, on, on it already, she's made a note. So that's our first bird, so we'll see, okay, we'll try to see how many birds we can get. Seb, we're going to have to be quick. <laughs> There's beautiful light now on these kudu as they're walking through the area, through this thicket. I do enjoy seeing the kudu, beautiful antelope with those huge ears. Now, this is one of the species of antelope that is a strict browser. So they, um, you, I spoke about the impala this morning being mixed feeders. They browse and they graze, whereas the kudu are browsers. They only feed off leaves of trees. A grateful Dad, you asked, um, why are there no kudu in the Mara? Um, uh, I, I don't know. They don't like the bright shukas that Brent wears. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I'm actually not sure. I don't know, um, but I'm sure you do get uh, kudu up in the uh, up in East Africa. I think the I'm trying, uh, is it the the lesser kudu that you get up there? I can't remember now. Can't remember. We'll have to, I wonder if Tristan has a book on. I don't think so. I'm not sure. I didn't. I actually didn't know that they don't see kudu up there. Uh, maybe the vegetation, the area. You know, like some of the um, the the animals, especially the antelope. The 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 their um, distribution is quite different depending on on area, on terrain, on food, water, all of that. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe we can ask one of the the guys up in the Mara, if they know why they know Kudu, or why they haven't seen Kudu up there. I don't know why. I wonder if that little Janet is still in this tree that I saw a few weeks ago. Was it two weeks ago? Let's see. Uh, I don't see anything. All right, well, let's head across to Brent in the Mara and see what if he can tell us why there are no kudu up there. 
Well, it's definitely not because of my shookers. And I think Byron is just jealous like James. That's why he's referring to them. Uh, but it is a, it's a little bit of a sad story why there are no kudu in the Mara. Now, certain parts of the Mara, this would never have been a really good kudu country, but certain parts of the Mara, especially on the triangle side, along the escarpment there, uh, it used to be a lot more forested. But um, in the 1970s and 80s, uh, there was a, a big push for indigenous woods. And uh, a lot of that area that the kudus used to ha have it, inhabit um, got the, the trees and stuff got removed uh, and uh, slowly but surely the, the kudu dwindled now that's not to say they might not come back they do occur very close to the Mara uh, in the southern Serengeti and I think one or two were seen last year uh, around the Tanzanian border so it's not impossible just very unlikely now one must remember everyone goes oh people bad removing all the uh, trees and animals and etc now we've got to be very careful because remember this is a very different sort of landscape to what we used to uh, in other parts of Africa now the Mara is a man-made landscape now of course there was always high nutrients in the soil there's always there's good rainfall because of our altitude but the, the Mara was never this open and if we go back long enough there weren't that many wildebeest so what's happened over the last 10 15 thousand years um, with the Maasai and the Mangati and the, the cattle grazers. Uh, fire, elephants and cows and people obviously have created this ecosystem. So there wouldn't actually be this huge amount of wildebeest and zebra uh, if the, the habitat hadn't been changed by people slowly over thousands and thousands of years. So in removing a lot of the, the, the forested areas, uh, what happened is it gives ch uh, a lot of the, the decrease of grass is a chance to grow. So you've got lots of tree cover, grass battles. So with the removal of a lot of the tree cover and this really nutrient rich soil is given spring to the open plains of the Masai Mara and Serengeti. Now, we only know about it going on for the last 15,000 years. It could have been going on for even longer. Uh, but so it is always very interesting. And, and, and quite often as human beings, we're quick to jump on, on certain things. Uh, but each different area has its own unique history and, and own unique sort of combination of variables that create it. Now, even if you were to, so even, uh, well, for example, if we take the Sabi Sands, Juma, the Greater Kruger, um, James and I actually have had long discussions about this. We both believe that historically that area would have been a lot more open than it is now. Now, there is slightly different because there were no cows there because of tetsi flies, um, which were eradicated by people in the 50s. But the reason there being that the, we, we feel the elephant population uh, would have been much, much larger than it is at the moment. So, therefore, that, 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 that sort of mixed mosaic broadleafed woodland that you, you get in the, in the Sabi Sands and the Greater Kruger would probably have been more, more open. Of course, we are, we are speculating. Uh, we are guessing, uh, but uh, it, it makes sort of common sense to me. So it's 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 quite an interesting thing if you if if you you sort of take a step back and and start looking at the at, at the slightly at the or not the slightly bigger picture, the much bigger picture um, about what's going on. Now, the last time I was up here, as I said, it was quite a long time ago. I did have lots of luck with lions. Um, so three young males and four females. Now, young males, not like those little boys, about three and a half, four, sort of five. So coming into prime. So let's see if they've been terrorizing the herds on top of Rhino Ridge. Last night as well, before we got to um, Amani's daughters, we, we saw the Paradise Pride, about 16 of them together, uh, just below Picnic Crossing, but on this side of the river. So we've got that to look forward to if we keep going in this direction. The other thing I'm definitely going to look for uh, this morning, actually maybe we'll do that right now, all decisions, decisions, is Amani's two daughters. Um, they were heading in this general direction from straight ahead of us. Uh, as I said, uh, they've probably got moving early this morning, but I don't think they're going to be too far. They might have moved off the river to avoid the, the heavy lion pressure around the crossings. But uh, it's going to be fascinating to see what's out and about this morning. Mm.
lots and lots of oldies up here still. Good morning, Courtney. Uh, Courtney is wondering, do non-migratory species end up migrating amongst the herd? Well, I wouldn't call it migrating. I'd say seasonal local movements. So the topi swimming across the river, stuff like that. So uh, even though it is happening during the migration, it probably happens throughout the year, uh, depending on food availability uh, and stuff like that. Now, this is the spot. This is actually the exact spot where we saw those lions last time. But at the moment, there's just lots of wildly beasts. Some zebras. Now, there's quite a famous fig tree uh, that lions like to sleep in up on Rhino Ridge. So I think we should go have a look at that fig tree, uh, see if there's any lions around there. Then if we have no luck from there, I think we delve down uh, towards the Mara River and the crossing, see if we can find Paradise Pride and uh, those two beautiful cheetah sisters. What do you guys think? I think that's a good idea. What do you think, Dave? Dave likes it, but we don't actually care what Dave thinks, do we, Dave? No, I'm only joking. Of course I do. Now, it sounds like Byron got off to a good start uh, on his bird challenge, but it sounds like he was already making excuses about winter. Byron, there are more than 100 bird species that live at Juma, winter or not, but I do wish him luck. Uh, I always like a bit of a birding challenge. It is, it is lots of fun. So let's go see how his search for our avian friends is going. Down there. There we go. Oh, wow, it's sitting out in the open. Giant eagle owl, everyone. But we don't actually care what Dave thinks, do we, Dave? No, I'm only joking. Of course I do. Now, it sounds like Byron got off to a good start uh, on his bird challenge, but it sounds like he was already making excuses about winter. Byron, there are more than 100 bird species that live at Juma, winter or not, but I do wish him luck. Uh, I always like a bit of a birding challenge. It is, it is lots of fun. So let's go see how his search for our avian friends is going. Down there.